Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are doing a different kind of review because this time we are reviewing a more obscure game. This is a game I grew up with that not that many people know even exists and that is Eminem's Adventure on the Nintendo DS at least. I know this game a lot of people haven't heard of since it's a game where the most viewed video for it only has 90,000 views and it's a game I've played to bits growing up and I thought I would revisit it with the release of Delta Emulator on iOS but has the game aged well since I played it for the first time in the early 2010s. You're about to find out. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the gameplay, Eminem's Adventure for the Nintendo DS plays as a 3D platformer game that plays a bit like Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie, but is more linear. There are only five worlds in the game each of them are inspired by different holonies and the ones they picked did confuse me as a kid because i wasn't too familiar with the 4th of july when i first played this game only because i live in the uk that's why i'm a bit confused the game features three of the m, &M mascots as playable characters red who is the all-rounder who can use wing abilities in some levels yellow who can double jump and green who is restricted to eight minute runs through sectors but can also use a tennis racket as a weapon for some reason i don't know why but i always found that an unusual tool for a game like this and like i said the game features five worlds called sectors which are themed after different holidays based on Valentine's Day, Easter, the 4th of July, Halloween, and Christmas. Even though the level design in the game is decent, I want to give credit to the bosses because each boss has a unique way of being defeated. The Cupid in the Valentine sector involves climbing up platforms while the Cupid is at the switch to deal damage, the Easter Bunny involves baiting it onto panels which causes it to take damage and Uncle Sam can take damage by tricking him into walking into lights. The progression system in the game may be a bit unusual but it does add a bit of replay value which persuades you to revisit different sectors and go back and get the green M&M candies to process into other sectors. At the beginning of each sector, only red is playable, but characters like yellow and green can't be used until after you completed the sector as red, which does add a bit of challenge in there. For the story, the story isn't too complex since it takes place in the M&M's factory which is to be expected from an M&M's platformer and the game is set around Christmas Eve as the M&M's red, yellow and green are preparing to pack up so they can enjoy their Christmas break. However, a system malfunction which causes 120 M&M candies to scatter around the factory causes all the robot workers in the factory to go haywire and it's red, yellow, and green's mission to go around the factory and collect the 120 M&Ms so they can enjoy their Christmas break. While this story may not be engaging for people who hated on this game, personal nostalgia saves me for this game. And that's why I get more enjoyment out of this game than a majority who did play it. For the graphics and the sound design, Graphically, Eminem's Adventure may not hold up in 2024, but the DS version has visuals that are comparable to other DS games that 
that released at the time, such as Mario Kart DS and Mario Party DS, which did use polygonal designs for the characters. The character animations are fair, but are noticeable when an enemy or boss stops doing a specific thing. I know that this is a DS game, but the faces on the M&Ms don't move at all. And while this isn't revolutionary in terms of visuals, I would say the graphics are okay to say the least, but not amazing. But the audio side of things in Eminem's adventure is where the game shows the most age. Since for the entire game, the only soundtrack that plays is a compressed version of the Easter Sector theme from the Wii version of the game. Which is wasn't something I was bothered about growing up back in 2010 and 2011, but replaying this game as an adult in 2024, it may get repetitive, but I do get nostalgia for the game's music, since I remember the music in the game well. The sound effects may not hold up in 2024, but in 2008 standards, but overall, the audio side of the game is alright, but doesn't really hold up in 2024's standards. For the summary, the gameplay, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The gameplay was decent, even if the game takes a different approach to the levels compared to other 3D platformers. Eminem's Adventure is still replayable for me in 2024, even as an adult. For the graphics, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Although the graphics don't hold up today, they are comparable to other DS games that were released at the time, such as Mario Kart DS and Mario Party DS, which did look polygonal in terms of character designs. For the level design, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I do feel like that the level structure was unusual, since the door system in the game does remind me a lot of Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie but the structure was linear and not complex. Each character does have their own path in the game, which does add replayability to the game. But overall, I enjoyed the level structure in this game as a kid. For the story, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Although the story isn't too complex, going through the different holiday themed sectors was fun. Even if some sectors, like the Easter sector, only lasted three levels for characters like Red, I still think it was fun going through the sectors. For the characters, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. If this game got one area right, it's the playable characters. Since each of them had their own unique abilities, such as Red being the all-arounder, Yellow being the double jumper, and Green wielding a tennis racket for some reason with an 8 minute time limit, I did find it weird that blue and orange were absent from this game as a kid, but I played this game for the first time after 2010, so it must have been a possibility that the blue and orange mascots had not been introduced yet. For the music, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Although what I, the one area I think hasn't aged well is the music. Although I wasn't bothered by this as a kid, replaying the game as an adult, I feel like the music got repetitive. Like, the game only played one music track through the whole game and that's it. But I do get nostalgia from the theme that does play. For the difficulty, I'm going to give it a moderate. I can say parts of the, the level design I did find challenging growing up, especially in areas such as the Halloween sector, where I struggled the most. For the length, I'm going to give it 20 hours. Eminem's adventure is quite long for a DS game due to the difficulty, but the number of times you have to replay the sectors to get the green M&M candies to progress through the game, it's going to take you a while to beat. For the audience, I am going to give it a 7 plus. The game does not have any sensitive violence to worry about, but is a knife-like sound effect when you either jump on or defeat an enemy. And for the perk, I am going to give it the play then sell perk. 
Although I think certain areas in Eminem's adventure haven't aged well, I think this game is one of those underrated and obscure games from my childhood. Everyone has their own form of obscure media that is close to them. And for me, my obscure piece of media is Eminem's adventure from the Nintendo DS. And overall, I give Eminem's adventure for the Nintendo DS a 7 out of 10. Even if Eminem's adventure is not a well-known game like a lot of games, this holds a special place for me in terms of nostalgia. While some areas in the game such as the sound design have poorly aged, nostalgia is what saves this game for me. Like, I have played a lot of obscure games on the DS as a kid, like some games from Disney, like Club Penguin or G-Force for the Nintendo DS. The film was mid, but I have nostalgia for the game. But Eminem's Adventure? is where I get nostalgia from in terms of obscure games. And even if a lot of people who did play this game hated it, I still enjoy this game today for nostalgia reasons. So guys, what do you think of my review for Eminem's Adventure? I know this is the most unusual choice for a game to review, but this is a game I have wanted to review years, only because I have heavy nostalgia on this game. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And if there is an obscure game from your childhood that you want me to review, I'll go ahead and review it for you if you want. So, I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.